Valencia is a city absolutely packed with awesome things to do. You could easily fill a week by staying within the city limits, exploring museums, local beaches, great tapas bars, and historical monuments. I've made two videos over the last 12 months about all of the cool things to do in this city. But there is also so much to see around Valencia. So many day trips, little villages, historical castles, Roman ruins, and insanely beautiful beaches that you should consider visiting if you're staying for a while in Valencia and want to get to know the region a little better. In today's video, we're going to explore unique spots worth your time, especially during the warmer beach-going months, which in Valencia is nearly half the year. Starting with one of my favorite beaches near Valencia, Cuyera. Hop on the train or drive here in about 30 minutes. Cuyera has two big draws, the Cuyera Castle, which has insane views back over the coastline. Climb up the winding stairs and pay a small fee to explore the site. Or you can drive up if you have a rental car, which is a little bit easier during those peak summer months when it is sweltering. The other reason not to miss a visit to Cuyera is the beach. It is one of the calmest, longest, cleanest, and most beautiful beaches I have been to in the Valencia community. Be sure to stop through the town to explore the older buildings and the central market as well. Another amazing beach town not to miss is Gandia. Welcome to a very sleepy Gandia. I hopped on the Cercanias train from Valencia and it took about an hour to get here. There's an old town to explore, which is what I'm doing now at the convent here. Uh, and then on a bus ride away, about a 15 minute bus ride away, is one of the most beautiful beaches, so I've heard. Uh, so this afternoon I'll go check that out. But first, let's explore the downtown. There's a lot to see in downtown Gandia including a very interesting archaeological museum, a beautiful town square, an enormous basilica, and the not-to-be-missed Ducal Palace. Entrance to the palace includes an informative audio guide, and the interior is truly magical. One of the reasons the town is so quiet is because it's August in Spain, which means most things are closed. <laughs> uh, it's also Saturday. It's about 4.30 p.m., so siesta time. So I think it's time to go to the beach. The bus to the beach leaves from right outside the train station and takes about 20 minutes. You can get off right at the boardwalk and stroll past some vendors before finding a patch of sand to relax on. And if you miss your train like we did, there's a cheap and cheerful little bar right outside the train station where you can have a beer and a snack while you wait for the next train back to Valencia. Wine lovers will not want to miss a day trip to the Utiel Requena wine region. This is a bit of a trek for a day trip, but I promise it is well worth it if you want to sample some delicious local wine and explore some of the history of this region. Good afternoon from Requena. We took a slow, slow train from Valencia this afternoon. It took about two hours in the end, but we're here. We're ready to try some wine. It is very hot. It's about 40 degrees, but uh, hopefully it's air conditioned inside. Some of them are in caves. Should be a fun day out. Start your tour by wandering around the historical center of the city. It is so stunning here, and on a very hot day, pretty quiet as well. Then you'll want to head to the Cuevas de la Villa, a set of caves that sits right below the main plaza. Those caves alone were worth the trip. It was so cool. Four euros per person, you get a little audio guide. 
so interesting, so cool, well worth the trip. I highly recommend it. And on a hot day like today, it was so nice and cool down there. After you've explored the culture and history of the town, it's time to drink some wine. Right next to the caves is one of the region's most famous winemakers, Murviedro. We went inside and sampled the wines that they had opened for the tastings. They told us about the wine and gave us a few snacks to nibble on while we sip. After a small tasting there, we headed to a nearby wine collective where you can sample wine from producers all over the Utiel Requena region, as well as purchase bottles to take home with you. With each sampling, you also got a plate of tapas, which was a very nice added touch. Before hopping back on the train, we stopped for some huevos rotos to soak up all that wine. Explore the history of this region by visiting the breathtaking city of Sagunto, which is home to Roman ruins, Moorish ruins, and a very modern Michelin-starred restaurant called Arel's. Welcome to a very humid Sagunto. It's about 30 minutes on the train from Valencia, very easy to get to, very hilly, but it's home to tons of Roman ruins and an old fortress that's over 2,000 years old and a few beautiful little admittages, the little chapels that you can visit around. Right now we are headed to the Roman ruins, which are inside a museum. They have very strange opening hours, but I think we're going on a tour, so headed there now. We started with the archaeological site of Via del Portic. This is an ancient Roman street that was discovered when a newly built apartment complex started digging underground to build a parking lot. Then it was over to the Roman theater, which the town still uses today for live performances. In fact, each summer you can come for a small fee to tons of different concerts and events here. From the theater, it's a short walk up the hill to the main event, the Segunto Castle. This castle dates back over 2,000 years. There are Iberian, Roman, Islamic, and medieval remains here. It's so cool that you can just wander around. There are hardly any restricted areas. You can just take your time, explore, sweat a little. It's so beautiful up here. Open till 8 p.m. and totally free. Over the centuries, this castle and fortification has seen a lot, including wars, countless modifications and continued repairs, and what you see today is mostly a castle in ruin. But you can feel the history here, and the views back over the surrounding region are pretty special too. Speaking of castles, if you love them and want to go somewhere that's an easy day trip from Valencia to see a truly spectacular castle, you have to get yourself to Chativa. Just know you'll be sweating all the way up to the top if you're walking. Uh. <laughs> there are actually two castles on the hill here, Castillo Menor which was built over Iberian and Roman ruins, and Castillo Mayor, which was built during medieval times. Climb each one for the best views of the other. Despite being an incredibly well-preserved site, we had the entire place almost all to ourselves. Be sure to visit the Basilica and the Old Hospital, as well as the Market Square. Just try to do it during opening hours, and not during siesta time, like when I visited.
one final day trip that is incredibly easy to access from Valencia and can indeed be done in half a day is the beautiful village of Port Saplaya. Known as the Little Venice of Valencia, I was a little disappointed to arrive and not see any actual canals. However, this marina-fronted neighborhood is colorful and fun to explore, and it has a calm beach to enjoy after you've walked amongst the brightly painted homes. I hope you enjoyed exploring these fun day trips from Valencia with me. I had the pleasure of spending just over a month with Valencia as my home base this summer, and these day trips were some of my absolute favorites that I experienced. They're packed with history, stunning views, great beaches, and delicious wine. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time.